Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, we are live with the 503 Portland Burnsiders on the red team and Boise Spud Throw. Uh, that is the East Beast on the blue team is Daz Lagbot, Bandabadozi, and Keys. I nailed that. I'm joined by Insomnia, and we're getting things underway. Call it, buddy. Oh, uh, looks like we see our first Chris Creek of the night, though. Octagon running that. Finally get to see those overheels. Hopefully, hopefully we actually get to see that charge up before the round ends. Vanda Badozi on loose cannon tide turner, which somebody was calling up as very strong on this. Get some uh, donks into people. Oh my god, destroying the medic. And then actually Claydemore charges away. It's certainly a good use for that charge just to get an escape out there. Daz getting a kill on Octagon. The Burnside is having a little bit of trouble. They're in the house and they're locked down. Octagon gone. And Man People's Curator have to find some action with Vihan. Vihan finding some snipes, though. At least has some angles for some snipes. Blue playing around the point right now. Enough time's been on the clock. I'm surprised they just don't go for that first initial cap. Oh, geez. As that beggar's bazooka ends up whipping down Trapezoider. And the Burnside is pushing in a little bit. But it's going to be dire times here as Vihan has got a sentry with him. But 14 health. The melee of the Kukri is out. And he gets taken down. Burnsiders. Losing the first round in the second round. Big surprise after that initial steamroll. Yeah, we do have a slightly different roster here. Uh, just to be fair, no Fletcher, who is a very experienced burn sider. Man People's Curator switching around, but still good scrim. We're getting some good fresh players in here, developing that talent. And right now, Daz going down. Keys with his beggar bazooka, looking to rotate through house, kind of blows his load. Uh, against the wall, finds nothing in there. East Beast completely separated with their medic right now. Yeah, and I don't know if uh, keeping them separated is really the motto here that they should be following. He's been running solo this entire round, just throwing crossbows out, trying to like, peg that mini sentry so his team can get in, but he's going to be completely alone soon. Yeah, Man People's Curator. Oh, okay, does splash down Lagbot's sentry gun. Just Keys here, who uh, with this Beggar's Bazooka finally gets a kill. The medic is down low. Burnsider is going to get a capture here. Because why not? And uh, it is just is left. Ties it up. Five, Sorry, just uh, changing one of my title cards here real quick. No, why not? Get things set up all professional-like. As Burnside is on this Crits Creek, a little bit slower out of the gates. Keys with his beggar's bazooka moving in. He's going to go toe to toe with this sentry. And the uh, engineer forced to back up. Vian, though, does get the snipe on Keys. And uh, Daz. Oh my god, Fandom Badozi. Samurai. samurai story. That is uh, ballsy. I like it. Ran he gets another kill. Oh, oh, he can't get the sentry gun down, though. And he needed some arrow heals from Is. Not going to happen, though. And uh, there goes another round for the Burnsiders. Now up uh, two to one. Is he running the booties as well? Does your inspect work? Because mine doesn't. Mine does not in tournament mode. It does sadly. look like booties to me. So he is going full melee demo demo samurai. Right out of spawn. Yeah, like it. looking for heals, looking for that bonus health. And uh, certainly it's going to be an interesting strategy. I think if he rolls with his team and rolls with keys, especially with this direct hit. Ooh, damage on the, the medic. A lot of hurt. Daz can't get the follow-up, though. Needs a help here. Putting her hurt down. Fanda Badozi coming in with uh, one charge. Oh, my God. He's got another kill. He is getting work done with this Samurai Sword. They're thinking about capturing. He's putting a lot of time on it. They don't have to, though. And that's the thing. is You should just sacrifice somebody. Sacrifice Daz. Throw him out there to get a kill on B-Lund or Octagon. Don't let him get a crits up. And uh, there we go. B-Lund. Uh, or Sorry, now just Octagon. Vanda Badozi could get another charge here. I think he just, oh, I think he burned his charge and wasted it, unfortunately. But there you go. The Demo Samurai throwing it down. He's even, he's even geared up pretty well for it. He's got the full outfit, which I have to respect. I have to respect that. Points for style, definitely. Yeah. So again, he kind of goes separate directions. He's actually gonna combat red in house here. Creeps up on Vian. Oh, and ducks the shot. But misses the charge, unfortunately. Didn't do a whole lot of damage. And Vian now knows he's up there. The East Beast trying to bring some pressure on the side. Vian, I'm sorry, Fanda Badozi 
Just letting that charge come back up. Ooh, good. He's got everybody trapped in here. Samurai starts swinging. Gets taken out, though. I think if he coordinated that a little bit better with the rest of his team, he could have found some good success there. But Key's still jumping and gets Beelon. Throwing some more damage here. And Blue has to capture here. But Daz putting pressure on um, as well. Lagbot has to get up there and capture. Okay, the Medic does it. As long as somebody does it. No, they haven't done it yet. Okay, Daz does come in. Lagbot has to get on the point. You know how this works, bro. There we do. Uh, there we go. Excuse me. He does get it. And the melee coming out. Lagbot securing the round for East Beast. 2.30 left. These have been slow, long rounds. And this has been the closest, tightest match of the night so far. Definitely loving it. This roster change has really helped them out. Yeah, evening things up a little bit here. See if the Burnsiders can get back into this half here. And People's Curator, great presence and looking down on the Medic. Calls out the retreat. Does need to help out his teammates, though. Turns around with the shotgun. Good damage on Keys. Right now, it's just Fanda Bedozi up top. 200 health, no overheals. Does need to find his Medic. It was completely across the other side of the map right oh, now. Oh, man. If they could Opposite side of the tunnel. It'd be, it could work. Uh, is, oh, my God. Does survive. Panda Bazozzi up top. But no, it's probably going to be it. Red can actually get a capture here. They've called out is and one last rocket from the man people's curator. Going to tie things up here. 135. So I'm guessing we'll have two more rounds here. So this is actually quite exciting here because... Um, if we get, uh, this round goes one way, that team, if they win again, will have a nice two-round lead going into the last map, or last, uh, sorry, the second half. Uh, otherwise, we'll have, you know, just a one round, or we could have a tie game at the end of this first half. Lagbot goes down early. Losing an Engineer, definitely tough there. Is gets sniped down as well. That's very unfortunate. And red team in control at a certain point. Phantom Bedozzi, oh my god, comes in with the charge. Gets Octagon, Trapezoid, are down too. And Daz going for the capture. He's on the point fighting, battling it out. Red might be able to get this capture as well. Phantom Bedozzi has to come in here. No, the capture did go down. Phantom Bedozzi and Keys up top. They should get the capture. Point. It's yep. just two up for Red. Trapezoider has to get out there. Is with Octagon. The, oh my god, the longer the way they wait, the harder it is to get the recap. And now they're going to have to battle it out. 2v5. Oh, no. There it is. Fanda Bedozzi. He does die in time to make sure that we get another round here. The East Beast. 4-3. to three. Looking to tie it up this round. Yeah. So hopefully the Burnsiders can get a tie here. Vian looking over the top. I see the engineer wants that head. Oh no, doesn't find him. Should have a good look though here. Lagbot takes some damage. They have to watch out though. Fanta Bedozzi is going to be coming in with this sword. There is a demo knight on the other side. Man People's Curator also getting a kill on uh, Daz. The charge is out here. Oh, doesn't get the kill to get the respawn, uh, re uh, health, excuse me, the rejuvenation. He's up top, is going to meet up with his medic, does get some heals. Red considering a capture here with Belon down. Might pressure one player in here and then get a capture. That's what I would advise in this situation. Key's trying to battle out here. Does get taken down. And it's just going to come down to Lagbot and his medic. Just the medic. And it looks like the Burnsiders are going to tie this half up. A very exciting half, Insomnia. Definitely. There it I would is. have liked to see some more Quits Creek action, though. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We got close a couple times, but not getting those full Ubers, which is why when I'm playing this, I like running that quick fix. Yeah, I like I like quick fix as well. Um, the loss of charge, obviously, an issue. Uh, but this one, I think also there's some, there's a few interesting quick fix rollouts that you can do. Let me switch over Especially with that demo night. Talk about it, yeah. I mean, definitely, um, you can just get into house extremely quick if you jump around house. Um, and uh, happen to land land on the ledge. I think like a demo double sticky jump can get you up there no problem, or a very good soldier uh, double jump. Um, then there's also the possibility, I just switched off and screwed up. There's also a possibility of going directly to upper, which is a very easy quick fix rollout, um, where you just come out of spawn and right away a demo or soldier jumps you up to that upper ledge and you come in and then you look at point from the high ground. And um, that's what I would say the three rollouts are here, is that you have uh, the main tunnel, you have um, upper via either quick fix or the long walk around, 
and then you also have a house rollout. Um, and uh, certainly a house or, um, I don't know, upper's definitely not conceding the point, but uh, a house rollout, you concede the point. And the issue with that is that house is very comfortable, but if you get um, two frags and then you don't push in and then they capture the point, um, you, didn't, you didn't really do a whole lot. And, and that house is so susceptible yeah. to splash damage too. And it's very easy to like do that strategy, like I just said, where you like go house and they're you're five and you're hanging out and then they push in and you kill two people and you're like, yeah, great. And then they just capture right away and respawn those people. And then right, usually right around that time you like lose one and you're like, oh great. Like they still hold all the defensive bonuses of having the point area. They've been well entrenched there. And now we only have four players, so. And plus you're stuck in house. You have to push in to maybe get a capture, to maybe save the round, and, and it's a much more difficult scenario. It's a tough spot, definitely. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to seeing the bans in this one, though. They did ban the heavy and, I believe, the pyro last round. Leaves a lot of options for them this time. Getting some shout-outs from the players, so to shout them out back, shout-out to Iz, um, Trapezoider, and uh, Octagon. Trapezoider and Octagoner, if those are the uh, uh, new organers, just getting in touch with, look forward to meeting them in person. Shout out to B Lund, who I just met in person uh, last Saturday at our most recent 503 LAN. Shout out to my co caster, Insomnia, who couldn't make it. He's in California right now, but hopefully sometime again we'll have you. Have you back? Definitely. Looking forward to it. And uh, anybody's welcome. We're, we're still nailing down a date for next month, but it might be August 22nd. Still TBD. Pretty much able to announce, though, that I'm going to be at PAX, which is extremely uh, exciting. Um, also, uh, I'm going to hype it um, and not finalize, but I am going to most likely be at TwitchCon. So I'm very excited about potentially being at TwitchCon. Nice. And thanks to Antline Audio. So going to be working with them in collaboration with them, doing some very cool stuff at TwitchCon. Um, I, uh, I believe I heard whisperings of some cool things. Um, I've had some conversations with them and uh, just excited for their support over the uh, years. They're very cool guys. Uh, the story of how I met them is, is an awesome story. And uh, they've been supporting TF2 for a long time. So they gave uh, Cygnus, who's not playing tonight, but they gave Cygnus a mod mic and uh, definitely present at the Burnsider Lands. So excited to be at TwitchCon with those guys. Now, uh, the PAX, though, is at the same weekend of uh, I-55. And uh, definitely excited for I-55 and uh, seeing what will happen there. Uh, I might be having to watch most of I-55 on VODs afterwards because I'm going to be very busy with PAX. Uh -huh. But we're also hoping that that perhaps some way in PAX we're going to have a lot of downtime. And, and one idea was that when I-55, as soon as I-55 wraps up, we try to have a uh, I-55 wrap-up show uh, every day. So there's a large time difference, and I-55 will wrap up, like, say, 4 o'clock on West Coast, you know. And then around 5 o'clock, perhaps we can sneak in like a half hour wrap up at least and say day one of I-55 just wrapped up. You know, here's the, here's what went down. Um, here's how the American teams are doing um, and, and talk about it a little bit because it is such a cool event. And we definitely want to give a focus uh, to it. So let's get back to the game, though, at hand. And uh, our bands are in and we are going. Blue has banned Demo Man and Red has banned Sniper. So... By him getting called out, and um, I think that's fair. You know, Sniper wasn't necessarily a huge uh, swing. But I think Sniper, you know, they banned, planned to ban it once, and uh, it was an easy ban uh, for him this time around. Um, blue banning the demo. Um, I think taking Ben of uh, Samurai Knight completely yeah, out of the picture. I, th I think that's a good call. That was very strong for him. Lagbot right away. Good reflex. Keeping the Burnsiders in check as we get moving with this tie game here, 4-4. And uh, right now some deaths coming out. Action all over the board. Is the on heavy. fire, but is surviving. Octagon and Man People's Curator need to meet up, that's for sure. Oh, there we are. Actually missing heal arrows, which would be nice right now, but he will get those heals up, up to that buff in no time. Um, they were undercharged, but uh, thanks to the quick fix, quick building, they will get charged up here. And they're going to actually build it as they push into the point. Nobody's here. They're going to give up the point. He's going to get a free kill on this heavy weapons guy as well. Has to stand up here to make sure he gets the capture. But they do. They haven't even used the quick fix. They're just going to jump down with it. Oh, my God. And blue spawns on the other side of him. It is a disaster. 
for the red team. First point to the Burnsiders. 5-0. Fight. By four? Did I say 5-0? 5-4. You said buzzer. 5-4. Getting my score thing on the side there and realizing interesting rollout here with keys where who whipped his team to mid and then jumped up to upper that's something i've not seen on this map before very interesting play yeah i think that's smart controlling upper very good here Lagbot comes out does help kill vi in there who is the pyro daz jumping in on the heavy weapons guy the medic backing up to get those heals from around the corner trapezoider goes down he's on point can't quite get the capture needed daz with it but daz was ripped up and had to back up for some uh, health pack heals is in Daz going to have to connect here as the Burnsiders uh, off to a second, uh, most likely a second round here. He is getting himself to, away. Yeah, yeah, he was hoping for that heal, but it, it was certainly a little too much of a stretch here. Daz still maintaining um, his position on the other side of the uh, of the map. Looks like they will probably be able to meet up here. Oh God, is under attack now. Uh, just in time to find Daz for some heals. Daz might get pushed off the edge here, though. Oh, and can't quite walk up. Is kills Trapezoider, and Daz burns to death to Vian. And uh, one of our uh, viewers asking, is there any variety for scouts, secondaries, or melee? Definitely. We do have Sandman. We do have... Um, even the festive rap. Um, there's all sorts of craziness. There's milk. There's Criticola. You actually haven't seen a whole lot of Criticola. Criticola definitely kind of considered to be a very powerful secondary, but well, not necessarily whipping it out. Buying good extinguishing as uh, the pressure gets to uh, is the medic taken out for red team. And I think this is going to be another round for the Burnsiders. Lagbot down low. 60 health. Last one standing. Flames put out, but just getting chipped away. Taking the Demonite away from Panda Bedozi really seems to have hurt this team. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, maybe, he switches over to Spy. Yeah, maybe they need a different, you know, maybe Panda Bedozi uh, can bring some soldier action. You know, maybe they need some other sort of lineup here. Um, definitely keys on on Spy could do it. Gets in, gets some possible swipes in. Taken out. He is getting chased back to spawn right now. Man, people's curator in a good spot to take down is. So, Fanta Bedozi on heavy weapons. Last one standing here. Oh, no, Daz still up just for a little bit. Six health. Managing to win that duel up against Man, people's curator. Also got the pack. Oh, going to get on point. They're not going to see him. Daz. Oh, what is. No Daz, way. Daz, what are you doing, Daz? Daz? Oh, my God, no. He had to go for it. I don't know if he could have gotten it, but he had to go for it. And he just, he just walked away from it. Mm, ladies and gentlemen, maybe that could be tied into one of the reasons why East Beast are having some issues. You gotta play the objective, um, you know. Definitely. Fanta Bidozi switches off on from heavy onto an engineer right now, which is definitely what I would have done from the start of this round. Mini Sentry goes up. It's like the sixth man on the team. Let's see if it can help. Yeah. See, Beeland getting pretty good heals. He took a lot of damage, but stayed alive, and that's what's important. He's got this gold Tommy Slav in style right now. Let's see if Daz and Lagbot can maybe get in there. And that's really what uh, the Burnsetters are doing right. They're playing heals, and they're sticking together. His last person standing. Burnsiders tearing it up after this halftime switch. And uh, I think that's really interesting. I mean, that definitely shows you something, too, about, you know, how bands can switch things up. And I, I think that the band thing is interesting because teams do have to be versatile. Fanda Bedozi with that demo night was a, a beasty, beastly opponent. And the Burnsiders had difficulties dealing with it. But there's also other strategies that could have possibly come out here for the East Beast team, as well as, you know, possibly just different uh, variations. Lagbot with an lineup. amazing reflex for out of house. Yeah, that's a good pick up there. Lagbot coming out, does light the uh, medic. Ooh, went for the medic who does go down there. This is a good puff, good damage on everybody. His next set of flare shots doesn't quite hit right, but is still doing great damage. Doesn't capture either. I call that out because that is actually the very, yeah. very correct play there to not capture. Keys ends up saying screw it, which actually doesn't matter. Trapezoid or last person standing with 100 health is 
uh, is a little banged out, the medic, but, you know, it's all right. Yeah, Trapezoid or 24 health, just kind of hanging in there. Trying to find a way. Should have just gone for the capture there. Okay, they are around, though, and they have spotted them. I mean, you just kind of got to commit to it at some point. And uh, Daz should be able to get the kill here. If not, somebody else will. Yeah, there we go, finally. One and a half minutes left in the map. So, yeah, a few more rounds. The Burnsiders definitely have this unlock overall. Five to one lead in this half after it was tied up in the uh, first half. So the bans here, banning the Demo Man and banning the Sniper. The Demo Man ban certainly having a very large impact as uh, that was uh, Fanta Bedozzi who was tearing it up for East Beast on the Demo Samurai. Probably won them all four of those rounds uh, that they had. Um, definitely had a major impact on those, so. Um, this is going to be our last match of the night. Last couple rounds here. We'll wrap things up a little bit more uh, afterwards. After we finish paying attention to the action here. But uh, just uh, uh, probably this round plus one more. He's rotating around the side. Should get a good flank here. Doesn't hit the direct hit though. And then against the wall. Misses his entire clip. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not going to get you anywhere. Lagbot still standing. It's taken down. And we are going to have one more here. Uh, CNC Champagne and Cocaine did win our last season. Uh, they are not the, the they're not going to be defending their crown this season though, unless they slip in in that final slot in as the Southeast team, which uh, I don't know if they are eligible for. Uh, Lagbots coming right in with some flares. Uh, I think Vian though does uh, extinguish his teammates, which is uh, very important. He's coming across with direct hit. Don't think he lands those. Man, people's curator hiding uh, in spawn. Guess just being to make sure that the clock expires, but that's not really a problem here. Um, this is the opening round of these playoffs, the opening day. We're going to have another uh, set of opening round matches on Thursday, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern and uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. We do matches every, every month. The reason why this season seems so close to the last is that we just finished publishing all the VODs. Fanda Badozi does get the capture here, so the uh, spy play does pay off, although Man People's Curator was just hiding in the corner. <laughs> Shout out to Muma and uh, uh, DK, uh, all these players that uh, participated last month. Yeah, CNC not present this month. We were hoping to have them back, but maybe this month just didn't time out very well for them. Hopefully we will get them back to defend their crown at some point. Uh, it's not this month, and also, unfortunately, not this month, is Dunning-Kruger Effect. Uh, earlier today, the Dunning-Kruger Effect did forfeit out against the Portland Burnsiders. They were not able to field a team, and uh, that's why we uh, did this match here, why we saw the East Beast play twice tonight. Um, pat on the back for them for being good sports. They lost their first match. It wasn't the most positive experience for them, but then they came back. They did a scrim, and, well, they also lost that badly, but... They're still out there. They're still playing. Um, Tacos and his team have come back, um, you know, month after month in Arena Respawn. And that's what we're about is finding teams that can be professional. And I'm not, I don't mean this as a slight against DK because there's always reasons for everything. But I mean, we're trying to find teams that can be professional in the way that they handle our rule set, the way they follow our guides, the way that they interact with us, what we're expecting from them as organizers in terms of their timeliness, their promptness. Um, their ability to, to participate in this format, in this competition. And then we're looking to reward those people with money. And um, that money is 25 bucks was on the line today. The Portland Birdsiders got it um, as a, uh, yeah, let me do an in interview. Um, interview. Uh, the Portland Birdsiders got it today as a default because the uh, Dunning-Kruger effect uh, forfeited, as I mentioned. The pretty... Uh, sorry, Pink Flowers of Friendship, our earlier match, won their $25 earlier. Then the uh, next match, there's going to be 50 bucks on the line for the team. So that's 10 more bucks per player. If you win that, you won 15 bucks each player. And then finally, it is 150 There's a good amount of money online on the final. Maybe it's 125 And in total, you do get a fair amount. So, um... <clears throat> Let me just confirm which burn cider that we're going to get in here. But I just want to be encouraging to people who are interested in Arena Respawn and the Pro Battle League. Um, check out uh, the Arena Respawn Steam Group as well as the Pro Battle League Steam Group. I also, before we switch over into this interview, um, I also uh, want to hype up um, our sponsor. 
And uh, our sponsor is iGames. You can check them out at iGamesApp.com. Even though the matches are finished, I'm just going to pull up uh, this graphic real quick here so that you guys can check out this graphic and their uh, website. iGames app is a uh, iTunes app <clears throat> that gives you uh, access to information about upcoming game releases, allows you to kind of follow that, reviews, um, that sort of thing. And um, it's pretty cool. It seems like a good way to kind of build community about games and, and follow you know upcoming releases that you're interested in. So it's just a, kind of like a dollar uh, per download of the app or, you know, for the cost of the app and uh, they've been supporting us with this prize fund so we very much appreciate that check that out if you are interested in that and uh without further ado we are joined by well the captain for today stepping in for cygnus the captain of the burnsiders is b lund how you doing b hey i'm doing pretty good good so definitely a little bit of a surprise uh with gunning kruger effect uh forfeiting out um, what was the uh, atmosphere in the lead up uh, to the match time? I mean, if you guys, I know that we had some people stepping in today and I know that we maybe, I don't know how much scrims you guys got or if you guys got a scrim and then also just that mentality of knowing that you guys were about to step into DK. Let's, let's focus on that, that pre news mentality. What, what was it like in the mumble uh, before you, you got the news? Um, we were kind of just like, I don't know, because they, they stomped us last month. Mm -hmm. um, I was very excited uh, to play against them again. Um, I have nothing but utmost respect for DK. I love that team. I love playing against them. They're very good. Um, and it, it was kind of disappointing that we couldn't play against them. But these scrims were pretty fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think they were a good scream, and I think that this will help shake us up for uh, playing the Pink Flowers of Friendship. Um, what? Uh, let's talk about then, I guess, what did you guys feel like you learned or improved upon in these scrims, or what were the aspects that uh, East Beast were, were throwing at you that you had to adjust to? Um, I know for sure, let, let's, let's maybe let's save Demo Samurai. Let's talk about the other stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I felt like... Um... I don't know, like, uh, our team is still, like, brand new right now, uh, moving in a lot of people to Arena Respawn, and a lot of people mm -hmm. that I know from uh, Highlander, I'm trying to move in so that we can have a Highlander team next season, which is going to be pretty sick. Yeah. Um, uh, I felt that uh, from the new players that I brought in, and from the players that we had currently, we did very solid. Uh, whenever there were calls made... Uh, everyone followed through everyone did good like on discovery uh whenever we would say let's rotate left let's rotate house uh everyone would uh sometimes vian would rotate right and get sniper picks uh man people would always uh let us know what they were doing on scout it was very nice i wish man people could play with with us but he's off doing his thing yeah yeah we'll see uh i mean hopefully we can get him in for the uh, next match in the next round I mean, he's definitely on our roster, uh, not from the Portland area, but is a West Coaster, and uh, that's how it rolls, and uh, we appreciate him uh, playing with us. Definitely going to fear playing against him, um, possibly, in the future. And, um, yeah, let's talk about uh, Demo Samurai as well. Do you think that that was uh, an effective loadout? Was that, was that working for him, getting those heals? Yeah, that was actually really sick. Uh, <laughs> I tried going Demo Man, but I went stock. Um, mm -hmm. I swapped out to the Iron Bomber, Tide Turner, and like Cloud I'm More, however that thing's pronounced. Yes. And it, it was pretty fun. Uh, like, um, Grenade Launcher, Melee Demo on Arena Respawn, I feel is, is pretty fun because you can just like launch yeah. in and out of conflict. You can launch to the point, get away from it, uh, still be able to get picks from far away. Yeah, and definitely. he was running the samurai sword, so every time he got a pick, he was just right back up in it. Yeah, and I think he was on um, Tide Turner, but um, honestly, I could see uh, either Charge and Targe to get even more resistance, or the uh, Splendid Screen um, to get that uh, damage impact from your charge. Because um, the Tide Turner, obviously the Tide Turner charging is fantastic, but um, if he does use those booties, you actually get more... Uh, control of your charge so i, I think that uh, those other sacrifices might be um worth it over the uh, tide turner potentially so um that's interesting yeah. uh, to, to work out and certainly i mean that that's probably why you guys banned it right in the, in the second half <laughs> yeah um it was either banning uh demo man or engineer and we felt that the demo man ban was way more just because of stuff like that yeah 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 
Um, I mean, that, that makes sense. You know, uh, he brought a lot to the table. And uh, I think Engineer is interesting. You were having fun on Engineer in um, Discovery, right? Seemed like it. Yeah. Um, whenever I see the heavy band come in, I always get a little bit sad. But mm -hmm. then I uh, swapped over to Engineer. And I was running a Rescue Ranger, Wrangler, and the Jag. And the yeah. Jag is seriously an MVP. That thing is nuts. Mm -hmm. I was able to just run out, drop a level one, smack it five times. It's up. And then I just wrangle it, and I was able to get long distance kills like way fast with it. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what do you think of the um, halftime switch? Because uh, I know that you also are, are, you know, still fairly new to Arena Respawn. You did play last month um, when we didn't have this kind of halftime system, and the band system was a little bit different. Do you think that that was pretty cool, pretty fun? Yes, I really like the halftime switch uh, cool. because, like previously, it would just be like, all right, here's these two classes. Their band have fun for twenty minutes, and now it's like, all right, here we go. Uh, after like eight minutes or whatever it is, uh, we swap out. So it's like doing the like the two map thing, but like halfway through a map. And I, I yeah. really like that because it gives us uh, more. Um, we can just we can change it up more instead of being locked into like, all right, I'm going to play this yeah. class the entire time. It's yeah. like, all right, sweet, time to swap it up. Yeah, as well as, you know, one of our concerns or, you know, just something that is, uh, I think everybody's concerns, you know, is the items, the open white list and how some of these items can come into play. And uh, I talked about, you know, possibly banning soldier on um, drop down. You know, we didn't really see that. Uh, or sorry, that's that off blast, right? Sorry, off blast. Yeah. Um, you know, we didn't really see that. But that beggar's bazooka is just so obnoxious that uh, <laughs> it kind of warrants a ban sometimes. In my oh, opinion, yeah. You know. Um. Cool. Well, uh, the 4-4, and I, I think that's something interesting, too. You know, definitely on that second map, you guys were tied 4-4 after the first half. And after the bands, you guys were able to uh, run away with it. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, uh, that does wrap up uh, the Portland Burnsiders matches for the first week. Uh, we'll see you guys in action again next, next week, next Tuesday, where we have the uh, semifinals. The, uh, I believe our game will probably be... Um, the sorry 9 p.m eastern game and the other game will start at 7 p.m eastern so we'll be back tuesday for sure with that and then definitely thursday we got amateur hour versus like californians which will determine uh, who the burnsiders will be playing and uh as well as our other east coast match that is a, a to be determined team and ball up now actually also too i forgot insomnia do you have any questions for mr Belon? you pretty much touched on all of them but uh your map, you got banned out on two different maps for two different halves. I'm wondering, you got, finally got to bust out the Tomislav. Um, are you liking the changes? Oh, yeah. Uh, the new Tomislav is sick. Uh, that 20% uh, increased, um, what is it, accuracy? Yeah, that is really sick. Like, whenever I see a heavy, like, face-to-face, -face, I know I'm going to lose that one because the stock minigun just, like, poops on the Tomislav at close range. But at distances, like, mid, like, eh, mid to, like, closer uh tomislav is nuts and also if i see a heavy uh and i spin up faster and i start shooting them faster most of the time i usually will win that fight you looked pretty confident yeah oh yeah i love the tomislav it's sick now i guess another question this kind of ties into the bands just real quick um with the way that the bands and the halftime are set up there is an improvement in the sense that um, per map you know you can't ban a class uh, all the time uh you can definitely ban a class 50 percent of the time and you get you get two chances to ban classes do you think that the heavy is, is going to be a, a 50% ban rate? Or are you expecting to not play your main class half the time? It honestly depends on the map. Mm -hmm. Like, for real. Like, um, yeah, I've part ways come to accept that heavy's usually just gonna get banned. But um, it sometimes comes down to the map. Because, like, on uh, Off Blast that we just played, uh, if a team... Uh, like, if we know that they don't go through the center point, if they like to go around the outside, we'll probably ban, like, the pyro because, you know, air blasting is obnoxious, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but. <laughs> yeah, I guess it, uh, it, it remains to be seen kind of how teams will adjust to some kind of the ban possibilities here. Um, you know, and as we talked about what the halftime limit does allow for us, um, to put it in a place to actually get two bands going and uh, have some diversity here. And, you know, Pyro, uh, obviously a, a danger, and uh, uh, Sniper, a danger. And uh, it'll be interesting, though, because, I mean, you, you have, you know, without even throwing Soldier or Demo in there, 
um, if you look at the classes that uh, people you would generally say would be on that list of, you know, if you had four classes to ban, um, generally when I see Arena Respawn, you know, I definitely think of Heavy, I definitely think of Pyro, I definitely think of Sniper, and I definitely think of Engineer. So it's definitely really crazy to think that, you know, the three classes that are not in the regular list of classes to ban are the three main combat classes and sixes. So, um, you know, that, <laughs> that's, that's very interesting to me that, you know, if you want to be disruptive, probably being disruptive is, is banning those classes and, and trying to let some of these other outside classes that could be considered overpowered and easy bans uh, through. So, interesting mechanics. Yeah, I've noticed usually like the sixes classes are rarely touched mm -hmm. because people know how to play them and deal with them. Uh, then there's like uh, the engineer just comes in, you know, like how you said, like Engie's on like the list of like, hey, let's ban that because like in a 5v5 format, just having a sentry there is kind of really annoying. Yeah. And same with like uh, Spy, you know, there's not many classes, uh, I mean, not many other players to try and go out and pick. And when they're dead, they're dead. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely see as the meta of a, a team or of Arena Respawn uh, evolves, uh, you know, banning Spy is very, very situational. And I think that, you know, he, he's vaguely expressed interest in it. And we'll see if maybe we could get him to, to form a squad or to be on a squad to commit the time for it. If you were playing somebody like Stabby Sabby or H and G, uh, you know, like if he if he wrecks you oh, yeah. in, the, in the first half, you know, you definitely could like justifiably be like, no, we're banning Spy. But oh yeah, you know, I think that most of the other times and circumstances, Spy is considered a a a, a non ban and, and a non factor. So uh, even with the way that it's set up, you still you can ban four times, and then you kind of have seven of these key classes like we're talking about. So. We'll see. We'll see how things develop. Um, any final words from you, B, if you want to give some shout-outs real quick before we wrap up? Or, uh... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shout-out to TFO and BHW, uh, my Highlander teams. Uh, Abstep, Panda Dave, those guys are sick. Uh, the guys I just brought in here, uh, Trapezoid and Octagon. And Techno. Techno's a cool guy. Um, are those guys... So who's from Oregon? And where are they from? From, from Oregon, we have Abstep, Trapezoid, and Octagon. Um, can you, can you vaguely say where, or if that's all right? Or... Uh, Trapezoid and Octagon are from Salem. Abstep is from Vancouver. Nice, nice. So, we're rounding out the Salem team a little bit with my boy Barry Wilson. That's three out of five right there. We get Harrison. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's four out of five. So, maybe they're ready to uh, represent at the next LAN. We'll, we'll get them to throw down for Salem in the uh, Ulti Duo competition, at least. Oh, for sure. All right, cool, man. Well, um, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, big shout out to my co-host tonight, Insomnia. You guys will be hearing more uh, from him. Uh, thanks, bud. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And uh, definitely shout out to the Arena Respawn organizing crew. I'm talking about Pro Battle League's Gizmo and Lagbot 30,000, two of the main guys behind the scenes. But there's certainly a bunch of other people involved as well. And I want to give a shout-out to all the teams that are playing uh, this season. We uh, make everybody jump through some hoops. But, hey, we're throwing money at you. So um, it's easy to jump through these hoops. If you're interested in playing Arena Respawn, please check us out. we got three more fantastic months of tournaments coming at you in the works. Lockdown no matter what. So uh, it's really exciting to see this format continue to evolve. Hopefully, um, you know, this month is exciting because of the gunmetal update and a, a meta and weapons that people are still understanding. I think there's so much potential for growth here in terms of loadouts, classes, things that people are not running in this tournament yet. And maybe you're a bunch of scrubs, and maybe because you actually have the balls and the knowledge and the know-how to run Babyface Blaster in Criticola that you can take this tournament. So please turn up. We, we love to have like a group stage. We'd love to have more matches, but we, we have to have more teams. We have to have more challengers, more contestants throwing it down. So... We have uh, wonderful uh, sponsors, wonderful people working on it. And, um, you know, please uh, continue to show your support just through your viewership, through everything. We, we definitely appreciate it. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. I am Eckstein. And, well, we'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Ow.